when you guys said, come and, you know, do you want to do the book? I thought, well, it's nearly 20 years have passed. If I don't do it, then the stuff will just sit in a box. Hi, I'm Josh Cheese. I guess I'm the author of Print the Myth, Jazz Drummer Portraits 1981 to 2002. This is the stuff that your uh, wife, your partner says, what's all that stuff in the shed or in the, you know, behind the sofa? Well, this is, to me, this is a good argument for keeping your stuff behind the sofa because um, in those boxes, we found all these gems of things from that time. And now they're all kind of encapsulated in this book. So it's amazing seeing it all in one place. And that was part of the idea of, of doing this was to like take it all and put it in one place so that people um, that were inspired by Joe, fans, um, other artists who respect him, his children, his grandchildren, my child, to see that, you know, we really, I always say like, no one really cares about this stuff as much as we do, you know. Um, we were obsessive about our musical projects, we were obsessive about the words in the songs, the way the pictures looked, what, what we were wearing, um, what we were doing, who we were hanging out with, what we were reading, um, what we had to say. Those are things worth sharing and reminding people of. So anyway, Print the Myth, the signature edition, is that right? That's the classic edition. Oh, let's take that again. This is the classic edition. Ooh, look, red ribbon. So you can find your favorite photo easily. Images inspired me to do this. My whole thing was like, I was driven just by the passion of the music and I just went and did it myself. Because of the music of The Clash and what's behind it, that punk kind of ethic and the kind of anti-fascist, pro-creative vibe, I just knew I wanted to kind of be a part of this thing that was happening. And so I took my little shitty camera and went and, you know, ended up joining the circus. The 16-year-old me that took this in the audience of Bonds with no pass or anything, I think would be happy. It's kind of a trip to see pictures that you took when you were 16 years old. For some of them, I would just like take it home and develop it in my, my mom's bathroom and sometimes fuck it up and learn as I went along. And some of them, you know, the Polaroid ones, I would just develop like develop in the street on this little cranking, you know, machine that we used that Joe loved. There was this kind of immediacy. It was like, oh, we need a sleeve for Trash City. What should we do? Let's go and like, let's go and stand in front of Buckingham Palace and climb around on the statues and take pictures and then we'll make a collage out of it. I think that you'll see in the book, it's a lot of the stuff, the mm. ephemera and things, all the sketches, there was so much, it's seemingly downtime when you're in the studio. It feels like nothing's happening, but there's something like this very intense kind of creative vibe and somewhere I would be in the corner like taking pictures or we would draw ideas for album covers or sketches or just silly things or cut out things from magazines. Joe's kids were around in 89 when we were doing earthquake weather in LA. We had the kids color in some of our crazy Xerox collages. We had the kids do matchbooks. I love the matchbooks that say, keep away from children, that we had children drawing on. So now we're gonna look at the signature edition, which comes in the fetching orange cover with a print inside. The end papers are by Damien Hurst, who was kind enough to let me use this crazy spin painting of my image of Joe, which has kind of become this kind of iconic thing, which is funny since we really put off the photo shoot for the album until like literally my cab was waiting in the driveway and we took these pictures and they became this kind of iconic silhouette of Joe. The signature edition, see, signed by me. So there's only 500 of these. Joe Strummer, Portraits 1981 to 2002, Print the Myth. It was Print the Legend.
Why was I obsessed with that? Why did I change it? Oh, because a myth is a traditional story, especially one concerning early history of people or explaining a natural or social phenomenon typically involving supernatural beings or events. You know, I used to sit around with like my Jewish grandmother and look through her photo album and she would go, he's gone, she's gone, she's gone. During the COVID times, I think our mortality really came to the fore. It's kind of bittersweet because I would like to have Joe here looking at it, you know, laughing about moments, like silly times we had. You know, the world has changed so much. You see your youth um, and the way you looked at the world in a different way. And, um, and that's kind of, that's interesting. I mean, I definitely saw them as kind of kindred spirits. And I think after a while I earned their respect too, you know, to be the guy. And still to this day, I, I help out the clash sometimes when they need me to pull out pictures for combat rock or, or whatever it is. And some of those are in here. You can't manufacture authenticity. You can't order it up. It's not an app. When you look someone in the eye, um, they know that you really believe in, in what you're saying or what the project is or what, what it means. And I, I hope that comes across in this, how it's manufactured, what's in it, the imagery, the way it's laid out. All of this stuff is very intentional to show that Joe and I, our creative friendship was kind of like a little factory for all these things, which hopefully kind of inspired other people to be creative. The ultimate edition. And why is this the ultimate edition, John? It's the ultimate edition because it comes with um, a numbered print, two numbered prints, and a poster, and the book is signed, and it's a limited edition of only 100. And it's actual leather cover, but it's recycled for all you vegetarians out there. It's heavy. There's only 100 of them. This cover image was from the Polaroid Polapan film, which you would put it in a machine and roll it through, and it would sometimes get caught and, you know, the end of the roll. So this is really the end of the roll where it's got fogged or something, the chemicals kind of got fucked up. And to me, that's like the beauty is in those kind of moments when things kind of are not perfect. This one is in a kind of British racing green, which kind of came to me because Joe's beloved Morris Minor was in that kind of British racing green. Even the, uh, what do we call this, John? What's the technical? The marker ribbon. The marker ribbon is green, although it doesn't match perfectly. I'm going to talk to you about that later. Here's Joe recording the sound of the ignition for the song Rain Street by the Pogues during the Hell's Ditch sessions. Here's Joe and Jim Jarmusch on a roof smoking a jazz woodbine cigarette. These are some of my scribbles for um, what would become tour t-shirts and badges, single covers, the island hopping single cover. I think that's pretty cool. There's only a hundred of them in this world of mass production. But you know that if you get one of those, you're in an elite group of people with good taste. I don't want to say elite group. Fuck that. Or the anti-elite. Amazing work. Thank you guys for putting that together. Oh, it smells so good. You know when you get a freshly printed, freshly printed book. It's very exciting.